All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is the Mouse That Roars Radio News here. I'm Roger Fredenberg, your host. You can hear us at regularguide.com. Today we are going to explore one of those Roger's pet peeve topics as we bring on the author of Behind the Green Mask and a, 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 an awesome fighter in this Agenda 21 sustained development globalonianism uh, from the Bay Area, one of my newfound heroes, Rosa Corey, joins us. Hello, Rosa. Hi. Hi, Roger. How are you doing? Well, I'd be doing better if I hadn't been asleep while my community was taken over by the robber barons. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? It's so wild. Um, I guess I, just to start out with, uh, just give me an explanation of, of who you are who's uh, or what is the Post-Sustainability Institute, and um, how did you enter and get involved in trying to stop a U.N. agenda? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a lot right there. Um, I, uh, uh, I am a commercial real estate appraiser, and my specialty is eminent domain valuation. And I fell into what I call the snake pit of the United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development while I was fighting a huge redevelopment project here in my town, which is about an hour north of San Francisco. And when I uh, was researching redevelopment, which uh, people uh, think of it as urban uh, you know, urban renewal or something like that, but it is, uh, it's a way of funding and uh, implementing United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development across the nation We're using your property tax dollars. And in cities uh, that don't use redevelopment, uh, they use transportation tax dollars, infrastructure financing districts, and uh, TIFs, uh, um, which is uh, tax increment financing. So there are many ways to fund United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development, and that's how I got involved with uh, in doing research. I'm a researcher. That's what I do. I have to be prepared to defend my point of view on land use and property rights in a courtroom. I'm a litigation support person. But who wants to fund it and why? Well, maybe we should talk about what it is. All right. Um, Tell me what it is. United Nations... United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development is uh, what I refer to as the biggest public relations scam in the history of the world. But it's way more than that. It, uh, it, first of all, Agenda 21, people hear that and they think, oh, you know, it sounds like uh, Catch-22 or Area 51 or something like that. But um, Agenda 21 is the agenda for the 21st century, and it was named that by the United Nations. And um, what happened with the United Nations is uh, the United Nations has sort of been in the uh, global control business for a long time. And in the 1970s, they came out with uh, their um, Habitat 1 and 2, uh, which are summits, and uh, they invited people uh, from around the world, countries from around the world, to discuss the serious problems that were facing the planet, and they determined that land private ownership of land is a threat to the planet and that uh, public ownership is superior because uh, government ownership of land does not create wealth. And wealth, in the view of the United Nations, is a danger to the planet because it involves then exploitation of the natural resources. So in 1987, the World Commission on Environment and Development uh, came up with, and that was called the Brutland Commission, it was chaired by Maurice Strong, who you'll probably remember from the oil for food scandal. Uh, he chaired that commission, and they are the ones who defined and created the term sustainable development. And now everybody has heard of sustainable development, but that was where it came from, the United Nations in 1987. And that is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. And this is, you know, just jargon. Whatever the hell that means. No, you know. But, of course, then they determined that, yes, everything we're doing now does uh, endanger future generations. And so um, they went away, and in five years, in 1992, they came back with the agenda for the 21st century, which is the blueprint and action plan for instating sustainable development worldwide. It's a global plan, but it's implemented locally. But in in America, 
the American people generally think that we're sheltered from this. We are um, protected. We've got the Constitution. We're freedom lovers. We're freedom fighters. We believe in individual liberty. We believe in rugged individualism. We celebrate Independence Day on the 4th of July. Most Americans can't even imagine the, the deep, dark, just kind of frightening aspects of what you call communitarianism. Is that what you call it's it? Communitarianism. Communitarianism, right. yes. Yeah, communitarianism is the social and political philosophy behind United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable Development. And I just want to make it clear that the United States did sign on to United Nations Agenda 21. In 1992, George H.W. Bush did sign us on to that, and President Clinton, when he took office in uh, January of 1993, um, about six months later, he created the President's Council on Sustainable Development, and the whole, per the whole purpose of that council, which was made up of 12 cabinet-level secretaries, was to implement Agenda 21 in the United States. And yes, this is actually completely at odds with what we are as Americans, because it's, it's founded on communitarianism. And I didn't make that term up. That's a, that is a term. It's a social and political philosophy. And it says that the individual's rights should be balanced with the rights of the community. And in this case, we're talking about the global community. So if you are, uh, by your simple ability to uh, identify yourself, to stand up and say that you're an independent person, to uh, be able to hold property, and I'm talking about uh, when we're looking at life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and including the right to own property, you are your most important private property. You are your private property. So ownership of your own being is a vital element of being but an American. It, it sounds, and communitarianism is uh, completely at odds with that. It sounds so pretty, though. Come on. We want to sustain for the future for our children and our grandchildren. We don't want to wear out the planet and use up the resources. You know, don't you well, feel you know, guilty for having a backyard, you fool? Mm, Why do well, you, you have know, a backyard for barbecues and swimming? Shame on you. I know. Well, here's the thing. You know, people don't know this, but everyone, you know, if you went down the street with a, uh, a camera on your shoulder and interviewed, uh, did a man on the street interview and asked people, what's sustainable development? You're going to get, you know, if you invite, if you interview 100 people, you'll get 100 different answers. But uh, here's what's considered unsustainable by the United Nations and by the United States because we signed on to this uh, plan. So single family residences, appliances, air conditioning, meat eating, dams, reservoirs, private vehicles. These are all considered a threat to the planet. Oh, my God. Farming, meat eating? Yes. Farming, even, is considered a threat to the planet because it releases greenhouse gas emissions oh, yeah. and Those that things. tillage, and therefore it's a threat to the global community. That is, um, wow. I mean, and I guess my, the way I'm trying to picture this in my mind is that there has to be a pretty big, uh, some kind of large organism politically or, or bureaucratically behind establishing this in 50 states and hundreds or thousands of cities. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has obviously been some kind of, a, of, a, of an ongoing effort by someone who's behind it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, when you talk to people about this, if they haven't heard of it, they say, you know what, you're talking about 1992. That's 20 years ago. I don't see anything going on in my country. Oh, man, and I, I say, well, you know, that's because it doesn't get called Agenda 21. They don't use that term. But when the President's Council on Sustainable Development was created in 1993, their whole job was to figure out a way to get this into every single city, county, and state in the United States. And what they did was they paid a multi-million dollar grant to the American Planning Association to change the land use planning for every single city and county and state in the entire country to conform to sustainable development. 
So, and there are sustainable development principles in every single land use document. These are called general plans and comprehensive plans, and they're all over the nation. All right, but and how did is, they get them in there? Well, here's how they did it. The American Planning Association is a private nonprofit. They write, they, what they did was they came up with a book called Growing Smart Legislative Guidebook with model statutes for planning and the management of change. Wow. Now that book is, is if, when you listen to that title, Growing Smart, it is smart growth. And this is how, this, this is not just a building design, smart growth, it is also an ideology. And they got that book into every single university and every college and every planning department in the entire country. And every planner has been trained in that, uh, on that book. It's in every single town in the country. And so when you go to your city and you say, how come you're building condos on top of, uh, you know, on top of shops right in the middle of my town? And why are my property tax dollars or my transportation tax dollars going to subsidize that? This is why. This is how they have changed our land use plans. You're unable to use your property now all over the United States unless you conform to a particular construction style that is the preferred development style of sustainable development. When I was a younger guy, I worked with a congressman, Helen Chenoweth, and her husband, Wayne Hage. I, I was part of something called the Western Lands Coalition. I don't even know if they're still out there now. I, I worked with, you know, Congressman Cooley in Oregon, a bunch of folks uh, trying to stop some of the stuff. And, and even before then was the, in Oregon, we have what's called the Land Conservation and Development Commission. And I, and I think everybody thought that came out of a project at Oregon State University. But I'm beginning to see now, based on what you're telling me, that, that they were just pawns being used by this other entity. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. And, and, and they came up with these uh, bizarre rules and regulations in Oregon, these what they called statewide land use planning. Mm -hmm. and, and it's one size fits all planning. Mm -hmm. Is that the same stuff? Yep, sure is. You're going to find that all over the United States. I travel all over the country and I do research constantly. And every single town, city, county, and state in the United States is doing the same thing because they were instructed to do this by the President's Council on Sustainable Development through the auspices of the American Planning Association. And it's not just what this is, it's government by unelected boards and commissions. Mm. And you'll see these regional plans all over the United States. They're called Visioning Your Town, uh, Your Town 2040, Your Town 2050, one Bay Area, uh, one state, one vision. Uh, I just looked at the plan for Hanoi, uh, Vietnam. Their Hanoi Central Regional Plan is the same as one Bay Area in San Francisco. These plans are all developed based on uh, sustainable development uh, guidelines that you'll find all, all over the world. And uh, one of the groups that is um, instrumental in getting this across the world is ICLE, which stands for International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives. This is a membership group. Uh, it's made up of uh, local elected officials, but it is not a government group. It is a private nonprofit that is made up of corporations, not other nonprofits, utility companies and elected officials and they are their entire task they were created to implement agenda 21 sustainable development worldwide do the people who are elected city council people mayors county commissioners or supervisors um do they do they know this is happening or are they being duped by their own planning staff mm -hmm. Some of them do know. Some of them are aware. It depends on, you know, some people, okay, first of all, you have to ask who, who are they and how did they get elected. Some of these people come out of incubators that are designed to bring uh, collaborators with United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development into your city, into your town. Others are just being basically instructed by their planning staff, and the planning staff themselves are actually, you know, they were indoctrinated by their schools. They were trained this way. 
and uh, you know they think that this is that they're saving the planet because you know the idea. First of all, no, you know some of them don't know. It's up to us to educate our elected officials and to remove those who are not going to cooperate with us when we tell them that we do not want uh, we do not want our government to be taken over by a corporatocracy. This is actually what's happening. It's a totalitarian corporatocracy in in progress right now. So if 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 a person walks into a city council central, uh, generally this stuff has to go through a planning committee, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the planning committee, the planning commission, somebody's going to look at this. They're going to have meetings. Is it just rubber stamped through, or, or mm-hmm. can you still well, fight it? Well, here's how it works. Um, you know, you're going to be, okay, the way you find this, the way it comes into your city, what it looks like when it's in your town, they, you'll never see it called Agenda 21. It's, uh, you'll see it as sustainable development. You'll see it as, uh, you know, like I said, as a, you know, visioning thing for, for a regional plan. Or you'll see it as your general plan or your comprehensive plan is being uh, updated. And you're invited, you're part of the public, you're invited to come on down and give your opinion yeah, on that right. plan. And the other thing that the President's Council on Sustainable Development did back in 1992-93 was besides giving a huge grant to the American Planning Association to get Agenda 21 into our cities through our land use plans, they also created a book called Sustainable America, A New Consensus. And what that is, consensus, you know, is when you get a bunch of people together and you, uh, you get them all to agree to something, you hear their point of view. Or, for instance, it means when people vote and you vote for someone who is going to represent your point of view, and if you don't agree with them, you can vote him out. But the new consensus, your government's idea of consensus, is neutralizing the opposition, neutralizing your enemies. So when you go to these visioning meetings, these meetings that are put on by your government, you're invited to come on down and give your point of view. You are actually going to a meeting where the plan has already been determined, written, and finalized before you walk in the room. You are given the impression that your point of view is actually desired by your government, and the reason for that is because your government wants you to feel that you have a voice still, that you have an opportunity to have an impression on what goes on around you, because revolution is bad for business. And your government does not want you standing up and saying that it is not your plan. They want to say later on that the citizens agreed to the plan and that you are merely some minor crank in the whole scheme of things who just doesn't happen to like it. But they, this is what they do. They dupe people. And these are what these visioning meetings are about. They're about bringing you into a, a government meeting, handing you a crayon, and having you vision on someone else's property. And this is a manipulation. It's a total manipulation of the public. That's why I said it's the biggest public relations scam in the history of the world. The entire world is being Delphi. So Delphi technique, it's created by the Rand Corporation in the 1960s. Right. Now, I mean, it looks on the surface just to be a you know, left-wing liberal plot. Is that what it is? No. That's not what, it, you know, it looks like that maybe, but the Republicans are, it's not a partisan thing. It's not a left-right thing. Uh, the Republicans pushed it for plenty of years. Now it just happens to be a Democratic, uh, you know, the Democrats are, have the ball. But, uh, you know, it was signed on to by George H.W. Bush. Um, this is a total non- totally nonpartisan plan, and it is being, uh, you know, in other words, you may find individual uh, elected officials who do not support it. The more people know about it, and the more they understand that the citizens of this country are waking up and will not accept this, then the more elected officials you'll find who are willing to uh, try and run around and get in front of you and help you fight it. So we don't but, we don't uh, want to no, just we don't want to blame President Obama. Obviously, he didn't do it. Well, um, you know, uh, he just carries the, the point, torch in this time frame. I you know I tell you I'm a liberal Democrat. I've been a Democrat since 1974. I did not personally vote for Obama, but, uh, you know, the thing is, if you're just, you can't, there's no silver bullet for this. You can't just blame a guy and think that if he's not in office, it's going to go away. 
because you had two Republicans supporting it and two Democrats supporting it. Right, and, and, and my and my point Congress. my point for saying that is that if people think that we're going to elect uh, Mitt Romney and all will be uh, well and better, uh, no. that's not going to happen. No, absolutely not, not at all. No, this is you know this plan. This plan has been uh, accepted by your government, and it is going like a freight train. And we, as Americans, need to recognize that this goes completely counter to what our Constitution guarantees us, our individual rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Communitarianism is completely at odds with the rights of the individual, because you can't balance the rights of the individual with the rights of the community. There is no, there are no rights of the community. So the rights of the individual are always going to be at odds with the so-called rights of the community, and the individual will always lose. You know, I wrote an article back in, I think it was around, I don't know, early in the Bush administration when they started talking about the Patriot Act and all of that. And, and I titled the book, uh, or the article, something about the Bush Stop. I don't remember the exact title right now, but how to stop the, I called it the Bush Stoppo, like the Gestapo. Mm -hmm. I, I saw this Patriot Act thing coming at me, and I said, man, this is America. We don't do that here, you know? Mm -hmm. And now, you know, people want to go out and fight, but but they just passed this addition to the Patriot Act called the, uh, the NDAA, the National Defense right, Authorization National Act. I mean, I, my concern is that if I step up now, am I going to be considered a terrorist or or belligerent and end up, you know, incarcerated eternally because now they can do that without a lawyer, without due process? Is mm -hmm. is that a danger? Should we be worried about this NDAA or is it just paranoia on my part? No, you're not paranoid. This is the real deal here. We're talking about your own government that has allowed warrantless searches and domestic surveillance and identified us as potential enemy combatants and redefined torture. If an enemy was trying to destroy us, it couldn't do a better job. This, you know, yes, this is something to be concerned about. You need to stand up as we need to stand up as Americans to say that we will not accept this. We are not going to be good Germans. We will not go along to get along. This is not what it means to be an American. And, um, you know, I, come on, you know, you're, you're either going to be, uh, you know, if you're, if you're worried about that now, you're not, you're not uh, you know, you're not worthy of being an American. You need to stand up and speak out. If you're just worried about, you know, if you stand up and speak out, what are they going to do to you? Well, what are you then? Are you really an American? Are you really someone who has the guts? to stand up and say what it means to be an American. That's what we need to do now. Well, I, you know, I agree. What, do, what does the NDAA actually do? What, what are the dangers of it? Well, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act, which was just passed uh, and signed into law by uh, President Obama, it was uh, passed by your Congress and signed into law, and it identifies us as potential enemy combatants. It defines the, uh, the battlefield as the world, the entire world, oh my including God. the United States. And, uh, you know, and then, it, you know, there's, I listened to Rand Paul and, uh, um, oh, what's his name, uh, Unruh, um, or, uh, yeah, right, was that his name? I forgot now. But anyway, uh, I listened to them debate this on, on, the, uh, on the Senate floor, and it was stunning, uh, the fact that we are, you know, if you're using, um, if, you're, if you're hoarding food, supposedly, if you have uh, uh, weapons that you're allowed to have under our, you know, under our Constitution and, against, and, and under the law, registered weapons, if you're, um, if you're, uh, you know, doing any number of things. If you're maybe looking at websites that you might not uh, should be able to look at, you know, according to the uh, what they're trying to push through with the new internet laws. You know, I mean, the thing is, when you've got something like this, where you have uh, uh, drones out there that are going to be permitted to to uh, to fly over the United States, and when you have um, that new prototype hummingbird that is a uh, spy and can, is the size of a hummingbird, looks like a hummingbird, and can fly in and out of your home and uh, listen to you, watch you. And they say that it's a prototype for the Pentagon, but that it may no longer, when it comes out, 
when it comes off of the prototype and is now permanent, you know, the, the final, that it's going to look like a, a sparrow because there aren't many hummingbirds in New York City. This is a real concern for Americans. Wow. I mean, I'm thinking about this. You, you mentioned hoarding food. And, I, you know, I'm an advertising agency, and one of my biggest clients is a storable food company. Mm -hmm. Are they in danger? Well, i tell you what's in danger. What's in danger is that, uh, you know, the FBI can now go through your trash, can now, uh, without a warrant, can look at your hotel records, can look at your, uh, your purchase records, can look at your, um, uh, your bank records, your Internet records, your telephone records. And uh, so you have, you know, you, that's, a, you know, that's an unre unreasonable search and seizure under the Fourth Amendment. And you have lost your rights, uh, you know, to be protected from uh, uh, unwarranted search and domestic surveillance. So this is happening now. And, you know, this is not a left-right issue. I, you know, I was, uh, I'm a member of the ACLU, and the ACLU sent me a note back in uh, June of 2011 saying, hey, Rosa, you know, you better t tell the FBI that you don't want them doing having these rights. Tell, uh, you know, tell the secretary, the uh, attorney general, that you don't want this going on. And uh, this is a this is not a left-right issue. People need to understand that this is all part of the same thing. It is all part of United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. All right. All of these elements are part of it, and that the reason is because. What it is, is a plan, a blueprint, an action plan to inventory and control all land, all water, all plants, all animals, all buildings, and all human beings, and all means of production in the world. How, how do we stop them, Rosa? Okay. The first thing is don't feel completely paralyzed and overwhelmed by this. It's a big thing, it's a heavy thing, but the country is waking up. I'm going all over the United States, and it's not just me, there are a lot of us out here speaking out. Everybody, everyone is part of this movement to stop it. There's no heroes, nobody's better than anyone else, we all just do the best we can. The main thing we're gonna start with is educating. We educate ourselves, and then we educate others. We educate our elected officials. We support our local politicians who are on board with us, and we remove those who are not. We vet them. We find out who supports them. What this plan is, is a plan of governance that goes around your elected officials. It is government by unelected boards and commissions. Oh, God. And it is a combination. It's a fascist state in process. It is corporation taking over your government. And this is what you're seeing all across the country. There are, I have in my book, which is called Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21. It's a short book. It's only about 170 pages. The last 20 pages of the book are about what you can do. And this is not, you know, you don't need to get fancy here. That's all very basic stuff that is very doable, and people are doing it all across the world. I have people uh, ordering my book from uh, New Zealand, from France, from Canada, all over the world. And it's not, you know, I, my book is great, but it's, you know, it's not that you, you, can, you can only do it if you have my book. What you have to do when you educate yourself we have flyers that you can put out there and tell people about it. You get out there, walk it out there. You, put out, you can put out 200 flyers in an hour if you go around to people's porches and drop them on their porches. You do your research. You see who runs your town, who runs your county, and who runs your neighborhood. Because your neighborhood associations have been infiltrated by people who are collaborators with the United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. These are people who are incubated from, uh, from nonprofit groups. For instance, we had a woman here who's running our neighborhood association. She works for the California Lung Association. She is the director of advocacy for, and communications. What do they advocate for? Smart growth, which is, as I said, the, de uh, the, the preferred development and design style for United Nations Agenda 21. And the reason for that 
is because you can be managed, surveilled, and observed while you're in a, a smart growth development. Smart growth is ground floor retail, built 12 feet high right to the edge of the sidewalk with two to three or more stories of residential units above that. Around the alley in the back, you have access for one car parking uh, in, in the units, one car per unit or less. And the front of that, out there on the street on the sidewalk, is a bike lane with a bus lane. It might be on a high-speed train line, or it might be a planned train line that never will exist, but will just take your tax dollars and, and suck them up for the next 100 years. This is a plan to destroy your independence, your financial independence, your ability to live freely and openly, to your ability to live out in the rural areas. This plan brings you in from the rural areas, in from the suburban areas, into the city centers where you can be managed, controlled, and observed. That's well, what the design of the plan is for. Um, where can people learn more about this on the web? And, and I know to get your book, your book's on the website, I suppose? Yeah, you can get my book on Amazon.com. My book is um, Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21. And then uh, have people, I'd, I'd love it if people would go to our website. It's called Democrats Against UN Agenda 21.com. And we have lots of information there, tons of source information, really great links, great articles. There's a great blog there. Videos. There are a lot of videos on the web. If you put my name in, my last name is K-O-I-R-E, you can find lots of great videos on, on uh, groups that, uh, that we affiliate with, that we associate with, that we've created, that are going around uh, the San Francisco Bay Area and fighting the regional plan here uh, called One Bay Area, which is, uh, you know, these plans, I, I want to talk about regional plans. Because the point is to destroy the sovereignty of your individual cities, counties, and states, and ultimately your nation, by uh, going around your existing uh, legislative and governmental uh, boundaries and instead creating regions, which are essentially, uh, you know, don't really exist. There's no, there's no real true boundaries for them. They actually break the boundaries of cities. They break the boundaries of counties. They go over the boundaries of states, and in fact, they include parts of other countries. So, didn't didn't the, didn't the United States just break up into like seven regions under Homeland Security? Well, there are different. You know, different agencies have different regions, and what's okay. different now? I think it's it's important to look at this. Uh, you know, yes. You may have regions, you know, for, uh, for a variety of reasons, but the regions that I'm talking about are the mega regions, which are uh, land use regions and regions for transportation. And this is what's really important, is that if you go to America2050.org, you'll find these 11 mega regions. And these regions are... Uh, for instance, the one in uh, northern, uh, the northwestern United States, is, um, it, it includes part of Oregon, part of Washington. Uh, I believe there's part, it's part of uh, Idaho as well, and part of Canada. It's called Cascadia. And uh, then the one in southern California includes part of Mexico. So you have these huge regions that are designed to uh, basically go around your elected officials. These regional boards are made up of elected officials, but there's no way for you to influence these huge boards. For instance, the Southern California one, there's a Southern California Association of Governments, which is SCAG. They have, uh, every state has its own regional boards. That one includes, I think it's 38,000 square miles, uh, 18 million people, and uh, and is, yeah, I think it has 189 cities. So if you're going to try and influence that board, you know, you, you see how hard it is to go down and influence oh, yeah. the city council. And they've been trying really hard here to get rid of elected officials. They want to mm -hmm. make a lot of these positions that are elected appointed. It's got to mm -hmm. be the same crowd. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's right. And you'll see, like, a, if you're in southern Oregon, um, for instance, there's a, what is that called, So Ready, which is southern Oregon regional economic, uh, economic. development, yeah. 
frauds, right. and, phonies, you know, fakes. Right. This is a private nonprofit. You know, it's basically designed to for cronyism. It's designed to support big business. And, uh, you know, likewise for your enterprise zones, which are, uh, you know, set up uh, on the same line as redevelopment project areas, which, uh, you know, will use your tax dollars to subsidize specific businesses. And um, redevelopment is another one where you uh, starve your government, uh, you know, you starve your local government for 30 to 45 years by scraping off the uh, property tax dollars for 30 to 45 years for a specific so-called blighted area. And then just using that money, uh, basically getting huge loans from uh, bond brokers. So your government is tremendously in debt and can't pay to keep your street lights on or your parks watered or your roads paved. This is all designed to take away your independence. Oh, Everything my God. Ro Rosa, Stockton, California, is on the yeah. verge of declaring bankruptcy right yes, now. Yes, that's right. And part of the reason why Stockton is in such trouble is because they used almost all of their property tax dollars to develop a stadium and a marina that just, it's unbelievable the amount of money they spent there. And you're finding that all across the country. And these, you know, just because uh, Jerry Brown ended redevelopment here in California does not mean those debts get canceled. Those debts are debts for 30 to 45 years. Your property tax dollars continue to pay those debts off for years and years. Yeah. We're talking about long-term yeah. collapse. California's in major trouble. And every state is in major trouble. Wow. Well, Rosa, um, we're going to have to, you and I, get together once in a while and update this because I want to get in this fight. I, I've been sitting on the sidelines. I, I admittedly kind of went to sleep and, you know, just didn't stay connected, and I've, I've got to make a comeback now. Uh, uh, I don't want any attention or, or publicity for it. I just want to figure out how to fix it. And I want, okay. to, thank, I want to thank you and, and all the people, especially the groups that you've been working with down the Bay Area, the, the, you know, to stop this one Bay Area plan and stuff. Uh, you guys, to me, you're all heroes, really. Uh, hey, we're all heroes. Every that's right. single one of us, all across the country, is is a hero. These are the times that try men's soul. Mm -hmm. We need to all get on board with this and fight it. All right, Rosa, thank you so much. Just real quick, how do people contact you? Democrats against UN Agenda 21.com. God bless you, Rosa. Thank you so much. Thank you.